I debated what to read and then finally came up with All for Love, The Transformative Power of Holding Space by Matt Kahn, who is a spiritual teacher, channeler, and author of many books. So I'm going to read a little bit from his chapter called Gratitude is Always Appropriate. I had started going to Sunday school around the age of 11 in preparation for my bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah. Their spontaneous knowing began dropping in more regularly. I would hear biblical tales of a wrathful God, and I just sensed within the core of my being how man-made that felt. Without understanding why or how, I intrinsically could discern the difference between an idea of God and the direct truth of divinity itself. I didn't even realize that I knew this at that time. It was just an obvious distinction between here is what man created God to be to keep people in check and the ineffable, ever-present light of spirit. Uh, because of his family, he says, I knew I was safe and secure in the presence of an invisible, loving force. While I would have profound glimpses of this truth throughout childhood and adolescence, my growing awareness began ramping up more frequently during my early adulthood. As it blossomed, I was particularly intrigued by the power and expression of gratitude. I had initially discovered subtle forms of gratitude in middle school, primarily as a defense mechanism against bullying. A group of kids would approach me to mock my height. I remember them saying, dude, you're short. In response, something inside me inspired me to say, I am, thanks for noticing. <laughs> they would look at me as if I'd made the dumbest comeback in history and then storm off. <laughs> Apparently, making fun of me wasn't entertaining for them since I hadn't given them the opposition they craved. As I matured, gratitude would resurface in response to other people's judgments. I would genuinely think, thank you for taking the time to notice me as part of your life, no matter how you choose to see me. Each time I chose to be grateful, I experienced a rather surprising, intoxicating bliss. Despite the hurtful words coming my way, I felt held, safe, and secure, just like I did on that sacred winter day in fifth grade. As this practice continued to evolve during my young adulthood, my childhood love of video games inspired me to think about gratitude creatively. Every time I offered gratitude to anything, I would imagine, imagine adding more points to my vibrational score. As I began seeing life through the eyes of gratitude, it became obvious to me that each interaction, outcome, and circumstance was a gift created to inspire my highest and greatest good, even when it was packaged in a form that was confusing overwhelming or frustrating to encounter. The more I led with gratitude, the more settled I felt in my body, the more peace I sensed throughout the world, and the more connected I felt to others, no matter our difference in opinion or however they chose to see me. It became quite liberating to realize how I didn't need to control anyone's viewpoints or choices when I had access to the bliss that gratitude offers. It still didn't make me best friends with those fed by ridiculing others, but it shifted my perspective enough to see the subjective and often unbearable nature of someone else's experience that I didn't have to interpret as a judgment or attack against me. Since the more appreciation I offered, the more steeped in spirit I felt myself to be, Gratitude became a way for me to walk through life as an empath, protected by the presence of light, depending on how open, unguarded, and grateful I allowed myself to be. 
It was as if I held a silent agreement to welcome each person as expressions of source, no matter how they had subconsciously agreed to present themselves or view me in return. You'd think this would have made me a target for greater attacks and criticism, yet the opposite seemed to occur.